Erin, we do have a poll here. So what I want you to, um, you're going to see a poll pop up and it's, can you anticipate what questions will be asked? So the poll is open, so please vote. What do you think? Can you anticipate the questions that you're going to be asked during an interview? So we'll give just a couple more seconds. Erin, how are we doing? We're doing great. We have about 75% uh, of our attendees have voted. And it looks like it's slowing to a halt. So I'll go ahead and read the results. 55% uh, of people said yes, 40% said maybe, and 5% said no. Okay, good. Those are the right answers. Well, there's not really a right or wrong answer, but yes, I believe that you can anticipate what's going to be asked. And I actually think it's higher than um, the number, but at least yes and a maybe we got almost 95% of you. So here's why I think you can determine what an interviewer is going to ask. You start with that job description that you've saved. And you explore that job description and you start to look at the qualifications. So as I look here this is a very simple um, job description that we found online it doesn't have a lot of information so this one's going to be limited but look at all of these things that I highlight and I could say hmm this might be what they want to know about me so it's facilitation recruitment yield and transition programs recruiting students travel hours organizational analytical skills communication skills working with others so as I look at this, I can say, hmm, I might have to provide examples of what I have done to sell or to recruit or promote. I will have to um, think about numbers and analytics because yield and transition uh, means that I've got to do some things that talk about the data, the statistics. Um, if I'm recruiting students, I'm giving examples of whatever programs I have done to recruit in the past. Am I able to travel? Uh, do I have great stamina working long hours? Um, you know, how have I demonstrated my commitment to go above and beyond? That's what those hours and that travel, that's what you can talk about. And then you've got the competency questions. These are organizational skills. What have you done to stay organized? What have you done to analyze and draw conclusions? How have you communicated effectively, often, clearly? And then tell me about some times when you've worked with teams. So look at that. I can anticipate what kinds of questions I'm going to be asked, which then lets me do my homework and preparing those star questions around these types of scenarios. That's how I know that you can prepare. And then there'll be a number of other questions that you're going to be asked. You know, the first one's going to be, tell me about yourself. You probably are going to talk about weaknesses and strengths. You need to be prepared to talk about why it is that you want this job and why you are the right candidate for this job. And of course, all of those tell me about a time when kind of questions, those behavior questions. So this is the foundation for every single interview. But let's dig a little bit into this weakness question uh, because there is a fine art in answering a weakness question. And answering a weakness question, it, it don't think you're going to fool the interviewer by saying, hmm, I think I'll disguise my strength and turn it into a weakness of a, uh, I work too much. Um, so you don't want to turn it into, I work too much and say, well, I work too hard. That's really not a weakness. What you do want to do is, is identify an actual weakness. So maybe you do procrastinate. Maybe you push deadlines. Maybe things, you know, some of those kinds of things might be an actual weakness. So here's how you answer that question. There's a formula. How did you identify it? What you're doing to work on it and why it's important for you to correct it. So as an example, in an actual weakness of procrastination, how I identified it. Well, I realized that I was uh, missing deadlines 
or I was feeling stressed because I had put things off to the last minute that were difficult or that I did not want to do. I decided that I needed to be better about procrastination and not procrastinating till the last minute. So I put an organization, I put a calendar in place. I decided that every day I was going to tackle my most dreaded or difficult or time consuming task because I know that in the future, my employer or my team or my department needs to rely on me and I need to do my part and I don't want to be the last one involved. And so that's what I'm doing to work on it and why it's important. That's how you answer a weakness question. And then let's move on to practice, practice, practice. Now, there is a fine line between practicing to be comfortable and memorizing answers. And I am not an advocate for memorizing answers. I am an advocate for practicing, preparing, and being comfortable in a discussion. Uh, I suggest that you use that star format, write the S, the T, the A, the R at the top of your page or down the side, and for all of those experience factors like organization, analytical skills, recruiting students in that past job, write at least 10 scenarios or answers to 10 behavioral questions out with the S, the T, the A, the R. Again, this isn't for you to memorize them. It is for you to study, rehearse, and to have things uh, in the back of your brain ready to, to go when you're asked that question. You might not be asked the same specific question, but you can apply that scenario to a number of different questions. You'll be amazed. So cover the basics. Uh, once you've done your behavior questions, then go through, you know, all of those. Why are you interested? If employed, what would you do? Why do you want to leave your current job? Why did you leave your last job? Um, what, and why should I hire you? Be really ready to answer the question, why should I hire you? Practice out loud. Don't just practice in your head. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, we read something, we're like, oh, I've got that. I can answer it. If you have not answered interview questions in a star format, you'll be amazed at how you get sidetracked and you never get to the R. You leave off the R if you don't practice. The result is what is most important, so practice, practice, practice. Record yourself, look in a mirror, practice with a friend, go and practice interviews. You cannot practice too much. You just become more comfortable and more natural the more you do it. So remember, this S, the T, the A, and the R, the situation, the task, the action, and the result is the framework for how you want to really prepare your interview answers and ace that interview. Okay, so um, let's talk about what to take with you to the interview. You still need paper copies of a resume. I don't know, people are like, well, it's all digital. Why do I need to do that? Well, resumes uh, are a great tool to hand out. Interviewers may or may not have a copy at hand. They might have left it on their desk. They might have looked at it at a computer and gotten busy. I know I have been guilty of that. Something has happened and my folder got left and I am at the interview and I don't have a copy of your resume. Seems like a no-brainer, but it happens. So always be prepared and put it on resume paper. Don't just run it off of the copy machine um, in the office or on the copier at your desk. Get invest in some nice quality resume paper. That is not cardstock, it is resume paper. If you don't know what it is, go to your local Staples, Office Depot, Kinko's and get resume paper. It has a rag content. It feels different, it looks nice, it feels professional. Um, have a business card. Have your business card ready to go and also always ask for a business card or contact information. You can take notes in. You see that folder on the desk? A portfolio or a pad folio. In that pad folio is your lifeline and it's all your prep work. Now I'm not saying take all of your fully written out answers to your scenarios, but I am saying take notes, take prompts. Um, so if you've got situations that you've identified, all you have to do is put one or two words to prompt you. Um, for me, it might be a merger, a reorganization, a cheater, an active shooter, uh, all of those things 
conjure up images and scenarios with my keywords with the prep with the preparation that I've done so take those in because you will get brain freeze you will get stuck on the same example and you need to be creative and so you can glance down at your notes have a pen have a blank piece of paper sometimes these questions that we ask you behavior questions are very complex uh, they have multiple parts and so you might need to jot it down for one so you don't miss the parts but two it gives you time to process the question so that you can think and yes it is okay to pause for a few seconds to gather your information to gather your thoughts before you just start immediately answering interviewers like to see that pause and gather they don't immediately want you to just start talking without thinking and considering and then you should be prepared with questions to ask Again, dependent on the length of your interview, you need a few questions or you might need 30 questions. Um, so, so always be prepared for that.